Group emails in Google Workspace allows you to create collaborative inboxes for specific members in your organization. For example, you can create a sales group, customer service group, support group, and more to communicate and engage internally with teams or externally with users like leads or customers. Hey guys, Stuart here, welcome back, I hope you're all doing well. Now today I'm going to share a brief tutorial guiding you through how to create group emails in Google Workspace. Okay, so before I walk you through this process, consider subscribing if you haven't done so already or if you're new to this channel. And with that, let's go ahead and create a group email for your business using Google Workspace. Okay, so to access and create email groups, also known as collaborative inboxes within Google Workspace, all we need to do is jump into our email inbox, our Gmail inbox, and then simply navigate up to apps on the top right hand corner. Then simply scroll down and locate admin, then click here. And that will take you here inside your Google Workspace admin once you've signed in to your account. Now you can also jump into your browser and type in admin.google.com and that will also take you here. Now to locate groups, simply navigate over to the left hand side and under directory, what we wanna do is select groups. Then to create a new group, simply click create group. And this is where we can go ahead and create a new email group. Now, for the purpose of today's tutorial, what I'm going to do is create a customer support email group, also known as a collaborative inbox. So this is a support email group where potential customers or our current customers can reach out to us for support. So what I would do is add our support team to this group. So I'm going to go ahead and name this customer support. Then once you've named your group, you can come down here and you have the option to add a description. What we're going to do is leave that blank for now and then come down to group email and your group email ID should be similar or the same as your group email name. So I'm going to come down here and add customer support. Then navigate over to your domain and make sure that you have the right domain selected. Then come down and simply add your group owners. And these are your group owners that have full access and control over your group settings. So once you've added your group owners, simply navigate down and click next. And under access type, this is where we want to control the level of access that group members have. So first, what we wanna do is select team and then come down to access settings. Now, next to contact owners, we can choose who has access to contact our owners within this group. Now, we only want our group owners and group members to be able to contact and disturb our owners. So what I'm going to do is click here and that removes the permission for group members, our entire organization and external users to be able to contact our owners. Then next to view members, we can select who has access to view our members within this group. And what we're gonna do is unselect entire organization because we don't need the entire organization to be able to see who's in this support group. So only group members, group managers, and group owners can view members within this group. Then if we navigate down to view conversations, we can select who can view our conversations within this group. And for us, because this group is strictly a customer support email group, collaborative inbox, then we only want people within our group to be able to access and view our conversations. So what I'm going to do is untick entire organization. And as you can see, only people within our customer support email group can view conversations. Then below this, we have publish posts. Basically, we want everyone to be able to send an email to our customer support email group. So what we're gonna do is select external. Now for those that only want to create a collaborative inbox group email with those inside your organization, so maybe this is a group for a specific department to share, collaborate and discuss ideas on. And in that case, all you would do is select group members to be able to publish posts. 
Then below membership settings, this is where we can choose who can manage our members within our group. So for us, we want to make sure that only our group owners can add, invite and approve our group members. So what we're going to do is unselect group managers. However, depending on the way that your group is structured, you can go ahead and choose the right option for you. Then if we scroll down here under who can join the group, we want to make sure that we have only invited users. So only invited users can join our group. And then here we have the option to allow members outside your organization to join your group. Now, because we're creating a internal customer support group, we're going to keep this turned off and then simply navigate down to create group once you've completed all those above settings. And just like that, we have created our customer support email group, our collaborative inbox. Now, before we go ahead and further customize our settings for our new group, what you want to do is make sure that you add members to your new group that you just created. Now, once you've done that, then simply come down to see group details for your group. Then simply come down to access settings. And then scroll down to the bottom of this page and select advanced settings. And then here under advanced settings, this is where we can further change some important settings for our group. However, most of the information on this page we can leave as default. There are just a few settings that we need to change. One of these is to enable collaborative inbox. And then if we scroll down a lot of this information we've already customized. So what we want to do is scroll past these settings and then under conversation history, we want to make sure that this is turned on. Basically all conversations will be kept in Google groups as well as members being sent an email directly to their email ID. And then down here under who can reply privately to authors, we want to select group members. And then again, if we scroll down the page, we want to make sure that our default sender information is correct. So basically when members post in this group, they can either post with their own email address or with the group email address. And basically for our group, we want members to use their own address so people can identify who is posting in the group. However, if we select group address, this means individuals within our group will be posting using the group address and this is autonomous. However, members will be able to switch between the two when posting. Then what we want to do is navigate down to spam message handling and we want to select here and then select post suspicious messages to the group. And this is important because what we want to do is make sure that all emails are coming into our collaborative inbox because if we set a spam filter and some emails, they could be important emails, didn't make it into our collaborative inbox, then we might be missing some very important emails. So on the odd occasion that we do get spam, that will arrive in our group. Then what we want to do is scroll down to email options. Under subject prefix, what we want to do is identify this group as our customer support email group so that people don't get confused when they're part of multiple groups. So for subject prefix, we tend to just add the email group name and make sure you've added these brackets. Then down here, you can choose to add an email footer. We're going to leave that. And then under auto replies, what we want to do is come down and enable auto reply to non-members outside the organization. So these are potential customers or customers that need to get in touch with our support team because they have some kind of issue. So what I would do is enable and then come down here and add a message such as, thanks for getting in touch with our customer support team. We will get back to you shortly. And this will be sent directly to the non-member outside our organization that sends an email to our email group ID. Now, depending on the nature of your group, you could also enable auto reply to members inside the organization. So for example, if another department has an issue, they could get in touch with you in regards to a problem they're having with their customer within their department. And those are the main settings that we look at when creating group emails. So once you've navigated through those settings, simply come down and click save changes. Now, for example, as you can see, I've arrived at my Gmail inbox. Now let's say that I need to send an email 
to our group that we just created. All I would do is click on to and type in customer and then if I come down here to our customer support group email you can see some basic information up here. This is the group email I want to send a email to and then I would simply compose that email. And within your Google Apps you can select groups and within groups you can find all your different group emails as well as the conversations within each of the groups. And you can simply navigate up to new conversation to create a new conversation within that group. And there we have it for this group email tutorial for beginners. Now if you have any questions about creating group emails with Google Workspace, make sure to pop those down below. And with that said, thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. If you got value, make sure you subscribe to this channel, like the video, and uh, with that I'll see you in the next video. Take care guys. <music>